Joining me again this year, and am I glad of that, from London is Esther Kraku, broadcaster, presenter, writer and commentator. Esther, lovely to see you again and Happy New Year to you. Do we take any heart from Ricky Gervais's win? Happy New Year to you too, and I definitely do. I, I mean, I watched Armageddon and it was hilarious. Um, Ricky Gervais has basically torn up the rule book, particularly for people who don't think you should be allowed to punch down in comedy, even though the whole point of comedy is to be able to mock whoever you want to. At the end of the day, he's not the kind of person that can be cancelled because he's uncancellable. And it's important to have voices like this that are not you know, vulnerable to the mob to actually speak out. If you actually watch the special, it was, it was very funny. I mean, the asylum seeker's uh, point did really make me laugh. And, you know, he threw in a few jabs there about trans people as usual. And if, if you read The Guardian, you would see all these articles about how outraged they were because he's just not funny anymore. Well, actually, you know, the, the ratings say differently. To have the wa most watched special last year, and I suspect Armageddon will probably be up there, says that people are really sick of this censorship and political correctness and it's actually quite funny to mock it well you mentioned punching down and asylum seekers uh, here's an example of uh, one of his jokes have a listen well i am woke now and i can prove it here you go i love illegal immigrants yeah sue me now I, sometimes i go down to dover for the day right and i i look out right and look at look for a boat, and I see a dinghy with about 60 of them, and I go over here like that, right? And I pull them in, I pull them into shore, and I go, women and children first. They go, there are no women and children. Just you lads, is it? Just come on, lads. Come on, lads. Um, Esther, is this punching down, or is it rude? Is it heartless, or is it just funny? Or both? I mean, it's, it's, it's funny and true. Uh, he, he is making a valid point. The overwhelming majority, and I'm talking in the area of around 90% of these people coming across the, the, the channel in small boats, these, you know, trembling refugees are w middle aged men, basically, or, or working age men, effectively. Um, and so that's not usually the picture of refugees you have. Usually you think if a refugee is someone who's a, a woman or a child because they tend to be the most vulnerable, especially if they're coming from conflict areas. So he is right. And another point that he makes, which is really, really uh, poignant, is the fact that the people that are criticizing the government's asylum approach never actually taking taken these migrants themselves they've never actually had any experience with the british immigration system they never actually have to live in the areas of the country mainly depri deprived coastal communities that have to deal with the intake of these migrants and the effect that they have on the nhs on on education on housing they never have to deal with that but they have so much to say about actually trying to stop these people um, Esther, I have to show you the funniest or weirdest political ad I have seen in years is for Donald Trump, who seems to be the favourite to win the US election this year. He's posted it himself on social media. It's absolutely driving his haters nuts. Here's some of it. And on June 14th, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, fix this country, work all day, fight the Marxists, eat supper, then go to the Oval Office and stay past midnight at a meeting of the heads of state. So God made Trump. I need somebody with arms, strong enough to rustle the deep state, and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to ruffle the feathers, tame cantankerous World Economic Forum, come home hungry, have to wait until the first lady is done with lunch with friends, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God gave us Trump. This is uh, as <laughs> much again, quite funny. What did you make of this ad? I mean, I think it was very much on, on, on brand for Trump. I mean, Trump is, 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 you know, a Marmite character. You either love him or hate him. But you cannot deny that the man is, is you know, box office entertainment value. Uh, he's hilarious. And to paint himself as a messianic figure to take on the likes of the World Economic Forum and, and, and Biden's administration, I think, I think it's brilliant. And it's, it's playing right into the hands. At the end of the day, you know, Trump has now been consistently polling above um, Joe Biden, which is worrying the Democrats, rightly so. And, he, you know, Biden has been trying to counter it by saying, democracy will die if Trump comes into power. But honestly, Biden is destroying the country. And I think for people that are not even inclined to, to Donald Trump, they, they really don't see him as any other, they don't see any other option. So to paint himself as this messianic figure is actually tongue in cheek, but also quite right, I would suspect. Well, yeah, but it's funny how many uh, newspaper stories I've seen raging at it. How could he say this like it was serious or 
saying, well, look, there are a lot of Americans who believe it. It's actually a, a sly pitch to them that they actually do think is a messianic figure. What do you make of that reaction? I mean, of course, uh, you know, Trump wasn't known for being a, quite an ev evangelical figure before he, he decided to enter <laughs> politics. I mean, he was known to kind of roll with high, high, high ballers in Hollywood and, and rappers and all of these people. But at the end of the day, politics is politics. You do, if you're going to, you know, lock in the Republican base, you do have to secure a large part of the Bible Belt. And fortunately, the Bible Belt do like references to God. And to, to make it both comical and in, in a way also uh, factual uh, is, is, is quite clever. I mean, one thing you have to admit is that Trump has excellent political instincts and he knows his audience and he knows how to ruffle the right feathers and he's doing exactly that. And of course his enemies advertises his, him uh, better than do his uh, friends. Uh, just quickly back in Britain there, so your Prime Minister, who's not half as funny, is saying something that uh, our other government tried to say nearly a decade ago, got, got smashed for it. Rishi Sunak now says he wants to cut welfare benefit uh, benefits and use that money to cut taxes. It makes sense to me, but how's it going down? I mean, people are surprised. <laughs> For some reason, there's an opportunity cost with with uh, all the welfare we've been spending our taxpayers' money on, uh, and that is higher taxes. So at the end of the day, Rishi Sunak is right. You cannot you know, cut taxes if you're going to keep spending the amount of money we're spending on welfare, particularly on unemployment. I mean, one in five people in this country are, are on unemployment benefits, and of that number, a third of them don't even have to look for work because many of them are claiming dis uh, unemployment benefits for being too anxious or depressed to go to work. So, you know, something needs to be done. Absolutely. Go for it. Absolutely. Esther Cracker, great to see you again. Talk to you next week.